Hello, everybody, and welcome back to yet another cast. Guys, I have for you the next game in the series between these two legends. This is the game that happened just after the one that I casted on Twisted Chili Rivers. This time we are on a very, very similar map. Of course, this time it is horizontal instead of vertical, but nonetheless, you can see the similarities. There is a north and south pond. Uh, but uh, again, last game, EXE crushing race in a bit of a uh, unceremonious fashion, a little unexpected. The game was turning out really well, but EXE with his air power, with control of the skies, did take both islands and then had a massive resource and positional advantage. So uh, we'll see, can Race get his revenge this game? Race, one of the best macro players that we do have in the community. Uh, so guys, if you haven't seen the first game, please go watch it, I'll link it in the description. Uh, but this second game is definitely going to be a banger. I'm sure that Race is going to be thirsty for his revenge after what EXE did to him in such uh, cruel and unceremonious fashion in the first game. Now, let's uh, talk about the differences from this game. Um, race going vehicle first. EXE going K-Bot first. That's the same. Uh, EXE is arm and race is core. That is also the same. So ultimately, not a ton of differences uh, here starting out. One thing that's interesting is that EXE has not even taken these two metal spots. Instead, using his commander to walk across the map and uh, uh, take a more offensive position or more aggressive position on the battlefield, uh, it's always... A difficult question as a player of whether you should do the calm walking, that's what the strategy is called, uh, or leave your commander in the base. There's some advantages to both. Now, the advantage to calm walking, especially on a map like this, is that obviously you can um, position very aggressively, and if anyone sends units, like if Ray sends units to try to attack it, his commander is right there with the D gun and whatever else. So it does give you a bulwark against your opponent's threats. However, it leaves your primary base exposed because typically if your commander is there, he can defend your base. So if your opponent figures out you're doing this, they can punish you very, uh, very hard. But uh, early on we see typical engagement race with three weasels keeping them all alive a bit of warcraft 3 micro right there if i ever did see it but uh look at me scribbling on the map like a child somebody ban this caster please exe with a single peewee and race now aware of this can he save the construction vehicle Got some nano blocking, very nice job. And now with two instigators coming down, race will save this, no problem. Now another uh, advantage of bringing your commander down here on this map in particular is that you can go into the water and build a shipyard uh, or the underwater mexes or tidal generators, which do give 30 energy per second on this map, which is a ton. And uh, EXE, as you can see, a nice sort of artificial wall with these solar collectors to protect the two defenders, and it's going to make it very difficult for our friend Race to get what he wants. Race, like I said, fuming from the last game, ready to give EXE the spanking he so desperately deserves, but EXE... Not willing to go down without a fight. Building a shipyard. So in the last game, EXE built a shipyard in both the North and South Ponds. And I have to say, that decision, I think, definitely contributed to his victory there. Because uh, 
race mostly was just going hovercrafts. As I mentioned many times, ships do beat hovercraft in a uh, stand-up, straight-up fight. So EXE having a naval presence in both pawns certainly contributed to his control of that game and ultimately giving him the victory. He did build hovercrafts as well, but he did not really commit to hovercrafts until he already had control of the of the sea. So uh, once again, EXE with the early naval play. I'm not sure this is how I would do it if I played this map myself. Again, he's building a, a structure that can only protect this tiny area of the map. But uh, it will do it extremely efficiently, and I think that's what EXE's going for. He still just has his KBOT lab. Like I said last game, the order in which the players construct uh, their production structures will have a big impact on the game. Now, EXE playing with fire a little bit here. He doesn't have a single defensive structure, not even a missile tower in his main base, so even a bomber could fly over and destroy all of that. His commander isn't there. EXE, very risky game plan, but uh, EXE knows danger. That is his uh, his close friend and confidant. What is Race doing this game? Race still on one vehicle plant, now working on his second. But as you can see, Race's economy quite a bit stronger. He's nearly doubling EXE's metal production, and that has something to do with the fact that EXE has gone into the water and race has taken much more of the land. But EXE looking to equalize that a little bit here with this Peewee run by. Sneaky little buggers. They're going to try and kill this con, and it doesn't look like race is truly in position to stop this, even with all the nano blocking in the world. I would be very surprised if that construction vehicle survives, and it will go down. That is, once again, has to be frustrating for race. EXE, of course, has his commander at the front. It will make it difficult to assault this area, but once again, the real action is here, where EXE could lose everything if he's not careful. I don't know if he has radar coverage. Uh, he does not. EXE cannot see that race is building kind of an expeditionary force here in the north. So EXE, he's <clears throat> got to be careful. He is, however, sniffing this out. And he's got Peewee's on patrol. So EXE seems to know, he probably with this radar saw the units moving across. So EXE was paying attention and he is now preparing for this. He's controlling the bottom pond and uh, Slowly catching up with race in the eco department. And, uh, yep. Plenty of peewees. Now, going air third is EXE. Race looking for an opening, but uh, not able to find it just yet. Race still just on the two vehicle plants. EXE is diversifying. He's uh, He's gone... Uh, Land, sea, and now air. So EXE bringing all three forms of military might to bear on his opponent. And really just playing a super solid game here. He's got units all over the map. And radars as well. Building some harpoons. Floating light laser towers in the water. He doesn't have to worry too much about pelicans. And we'll find this light laser tower, but it won't be quite enough to stop that. So nicely done by Race, getting that up just in time to protect his construction vehicle, to prevent it from dying once again in unceremonious, brutal fashion, as the last one did. But I do have to say, EXE just doing a lot with a little here. It's what it feels like. He's got his commander here, and Race may be going for a snipe, but with this two light laser, three light laser towers, and the commander, slow it down. Watch all the action and 
Pixel by pixel, EXE with 13 kills already. He's got to be careful bringing the Mariners up for some naval support. But this is the tricky part of this map, my friends. With the with the coast, with the uh, shoreline right here, EXE can simply dive into the water. He can simply jump in. Some kind of expert swimmer. Some kind of god of the sea. Race seems to think that he has EXE, but perhaps Race a little too confident. Commanders are quite difficult to kill in Escalation. Even though he's taken uh, ungodly amount of laser fire, he will stay alive. And with the Mariner support, he will walk away with his life. So again, as I was saying before, EXE doing a whole lot with a little here. You can see with just his commander and a few laser towers, he killed Race's whole army basically. And that's going to give EXE a huge advantage. But hold that thought because Race was also attacking in the southeast. As I mentioned before, this base is vulnerable. But I think there are just enough Peewees to... Uh, push this off and now he will be able to reclaim some of that and rebuild it without too much trouble but once again race doubling his metal supply so the advantage exe has on this map in this game is that he's uh he's got three different forms of tech where race is still only on vehicles and just doubling down on vehicles now going t2 vehicles so race on the vehicle game plan where EXE, he is a, uh, he is a man of many varied tastes. And he will, he will uh, be an aficionado of uh, land, sea, and air this game. A single leveler causing a lot of damage, but fighters in the mix now. And we already saw in the last game how much domination exe was able to uh able to employ or able to uh wreak on his opponent how much devastation he was able to uh afflict his poor enemy r race with total supremacy from the skies it's never a good feeling to be on the other side of a uh aerial raid of 10 million freedom fighters, or however many there was. Like I said, it, it began to look a, a little bit like some kind of insect hive or some kind of uh, Ender's Game style enemy with uh, billions of uh, insect like ships and all just uh, sort of prancing around waiting for that opponent. Waiting for that moment to strike. Circling like hawks. His EXE. I don't know. Okay, he's got him here. But uh, again, that's going to be a problem for race. It's certainly something he needs to address a little bit better this game. Building slashers, but uh, I've said it before. I don't feel like slashers are really the best solution. But oh, race with a few mines. I didn't even see him put these up. But that was certainly a couple mines that race had... Uh, it's sneakily planted in advance before EXE could, uh, get his, you know, uh, EXE really hasn't been ultra aggressive this game. A couple raids early on, but giving time, giving race time to build a bit of a minefield there. But unfortunately, the mine's not quite enough to kill all these peewees and, uh, it's strange to see that EXE is still be building peewees. Usually by now the peewee phase is over. We'll start to see storms and thuds and uh, maybe MAKs or warriors. The race making the pe or excuse me EXE making the peewees work. Fifteen minutes into the game, it's it's a bit impressive. 
And now going into hovercraft, building those zappers. And like the the raiding raiding hovercraft for arm the lightning lightning raiders. These are quite effective at uh, taking on unfortified positions and simply wiping out everything in their path. They don't do great in direct combat. Again, their role is a, as a raider. They're fast. They do a lot of damage, but they can't take a lot of damage. Once again, slashers. But EXE can easily avoid those. And as you can see, race economically is still way ahead. Almost 95 metal. Almost basically tripling EXE's economy. And the only advantage EXE really has at this point is that he uh, he has four different types of units. He's got hovers, ships, K-bots, and air. And that will be difficult because all race has are vehicles. And uh, going into T2, I'd like to see race perhaps build Cobra or two, some kind of flak. The EXE now crawling out of the sea with an army of zappers and the poor slashers simply don't stand a chance against these things and that is that is a lot of them but uh, race now pumping out manticore and those will be decent but not until he gets a few more I think these zappers will be able to take out the single manticore but another manticore coming and there is a light laser tower few more manticore as well so I think oh my god if VXC can get this geo it'd be huge the geo survives with a smidgen of health very very nicely done by race to hold off that attack as the uh, the air power will filter in kill the remaining instigators here but EXE, not quite done. He's got some more zappers. Trying to find what he can. Race hasn't even attempted to take the Northern Pond. And EXE, with a lot of fighters, but Race this game, taking his air defense very seriously. There are missile towers. Oh my god, EXE, you monster! What is this, EXE? <laughs> <laughs> with that single Freedom Fighter missile coming back for revenge to clean up, to finish the job. How impressive is that EXE with a single Freedom Fighter, that final missile. A bit like the, uh, the final scene in uh, Independence Day flying into the, into the mothership. Sending that final kamikaze freedom fighter at the uh, poor geothermal that did not deserve the abuse. And before race can even... Uh, before race can even repair it, it will die. But race, once again, seems to think... <laughs> he, he's... For the second time this game, he is, uh, has the impression that he's won. He's telling EXE that basically they should go to the next game, that it's over. He feels like he's so far ahead, and he is pretty far ahead economically, but uh, to count EXE like, out like this, I don't know, my friends. I, uh, I don't, I think EXE is the kind of player that you do not want to, uh, Underestimate. You do not want to uh, truly stop fearing until he is dead. And I mean dead. Not just on life support. Life support isn't good enough. This man must die. Race, perhaps. Getting a little too big for his britches here, thinking that he's got him. He does have the better map position. But that doesn't mean it's over. 
20 minutes into the game, EXE definitely looking a bit peaky. Could certainly be in a better position. Race doing what he loves to do and just slowly take over the map and win by attrition. Strangling EXE out with eco and map control at this moment. Basically doubling EXE's economic production. And of course he's also on T2. EXE on T2 but only building zippers. Zippers not great in combat. Though they can kill slashers. That's about the only thing they can kill. <laughs> but uh, Race has uh, taken his air defense very seriously this game. So he's got roving bands of slashers all over the map. And these floating light laser towers, well placed here. But uh, EXE, now with some bomber micro as well, trying to keep the cancer from spreading. And uh, building some defenders over here too. I don't know what that will accomplish, but nothing else. It's kind of funny. He's got kind of a mini base behind enemy lines. And using these bombers in the places that Race does not have any air defense. But uh, again, Race really committing to the air defense game plan. He's got Manticore, he's got Slashers, he's got Missile Turrets, he's probably got Flackers somewhere. The XC is a nice bomber micro, but it may not amount to much. Race has now found EXE's secret, secret base, but uh, once again, Race saying in the chat, better go next. Race confident in his superiority this game. He really thinks he's got him. It's the third time this game that he has uh, kind of assumed that he's won, but has he won? As a caster, I would say the game does look bad for EXE, but uh, to count him out, I don't know if I would do that even on my best day. But Race is now on advanced air, and <laughs> like I said, Race, you can tell, learned his lesson from the first game. In fact, maybe even overreacting. He is going every anti-air, every form of anti-air possible this game. He's on vamps, he's on uh, pulverizers, he's on manticore, and he's on slashers. He's just not going to let EXE win in this... Uh, Extremely dishonorable fashion a second time in a row, but uh, what can EXE do here? It does look bad, I admit. I admit EXE struggling to find an answer, pumping out spiders, but paralyzing Race's army. Probably not going to be the way to win. EXE. Oh, EXE's strategies are always so fun. This is, He's building a third hovercraft platform. Just He's decided he wants to go into hovers. I don't know how he made this decision. Advanced hovers might be a thing, but just three regular hovercraft platforms. I don't know. I think Manticore counter the T1 hover pretty well. Maybe some... T2 Hovercraft could stand up to the Manticore, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, I do agree with Race. It is looking it is looking a bit dire for our Russian player as Race with enough air defense to protect him from uh, from Doomsday here. And now he might even lose, EXE might even lose this, uh, his starting base, essentially. As a, a huge army of Manticore does come down and these spiders not really reacting in time. EXE, 
attempting to build Mavericks. He only has a couple so far, but Mavericks will be well positioned against Manticore. You can't, uh, can't underestimate that Maverick DPS. It is unbelievably high. So EXE may have pulled off a miracle defense with three Mavericks. The third one almost finished now. Race once again. Indicating that he thinks the game is over. <laughs> EXE telling Race that he let him win. Race doesn't seem too happy about that answer. Understandably so, but once again, I think Race perhaps being a bit too confident because we don't know what EXE we don't know what else he has in store just yet. Granted, Race has most of the map except for this tiny corner in the south. But, uh, yeah, that's a lot of Manticore. And uh, I don't think EXE can necessarily hold this off forever. He does still have the Mavericks. Mavericks, once they get veterans, he get even stronger and they're going to be well positioned. Race in the chat disagreeing with EXE's decision to go naval first. But, you know, it did work the first game. I don't know if perhaps he should... Uh, I don't know if Race should trash it that much. Can work, though maybe not going second naval. EXE's commander in quite a bit of trouble here. For sure, as uh, yeah, this this game looking terrible for EXE, but EXE does have one final hurrah. Building anti-air for now, trying to keep his commander alive. But that's a lot of torpedo gunships. There may be just enough anti-air here to stop this, but more torpedo gunships flying in. EXE's commander, very low. I think I think this might be it. EXE <laughs> building a wall of dragon's teeth, or of uh, shark's teeth, rather. Trying to pump out anti-air as fast as he can, but it looks like that's going to be the end. Race this game. Really taking the aerial threat seriously. Building as much air, air defense as you possibly can. And I think... I don't think there's enough dragons, uh, floating dragon's teeth in the world. But maybe I'm wrong. I mean, EXE. Oh my god, how is he doing this? His commander is at one hit. He's losing his uh, southeast base, his starting base. Oh my god, EXE, what are you doing? He's pushing this back. It shouldn't be possible. And his raiding army still moving north. Holy cow. EXE now up to half health. He was at once. He could have been breathed on. A sea urchin could have swam by him. But now, he's he's still alive and sending his army north, even as he loses the starting base. But once again, he's still in the game. He's counting him out too early. But Race perhaps thinking that... Uh, <laughs> Race saying, game to forget. Race clearly unhappy with this. He, he seems to think that he's uh, wasting his time. EXE considering this a challenge. The keep your commander alive challenge. And certainly he will do that, but uh, yeah, it's got to be, it's got to be frustrating for Race who is now moving to T3. So again, guys, this is Race's style. He does love to take over the map and then simply crush you in a, in a sort of stranglehold of uh, map domination. But uh, yeah, EXE, I think 
even even with that impressive defense I don't know if it's going to matter that is a lot of units race clearly frustrated that these uh, cyclones are not hitting their targets exe <laughs> <laughs> so race leaves the game uh i think just out of sheer frustration and exe saying i guess it's a win i'll let you the viewer decide who won that game did exe win because of his tenacity or did race leave simply because he was frustrated with exe's shenanigans i'll let you decide viewer you can you can be the one to answer that question in your own mind. Make your own headcanon about who won this game. But either way, great game by both sides. Uh, great job by EXE. Staying in the battle till the end. Uh, great job by Race. Uh, shoving him into a corner and then eventually getting tired of it. But I will say this. There is a game three. So there will be a final match. A final conclusion to determine who is the winner once and for all time between these two players. So guys, if you enjoyed this game, please like and subscribe and I will catch you on the next video.